Hey guys, Crayfish Carl here, and welcome back to our Pong tutorial series. Now, where we left off was we had our paddle and it could move. So now we need to reopen our project if you closed it. So you can press File, Open, and you will see your project wherever you saved it. So let's go ahead and double click it and open it. Now, if you notice the storyboard editor from before, it's not right here. But we can actually get to our game area by going to the workspace toolbar and double clicking right here on what we called our frame, which was game area. And now we are back to exactly where we left off. So our next goal is to make the paddle stop when it hits the top and bottom of the screen. To do that, let's go ahead and click on our paddle. And over in the properties toolbar, look for the events tab, which looks like this checkerboard right here. Let's click on that, and let's click New, and then we're going to click right in the space above it, and press Edit. This is a behavior in the Events Editor, and what we're going to add here is the condition we talked about before. We're going to make it stop when it hits the edge of the screen. So let's press New Condition, right-click on the paddle, highlight Position, test position of the paddle. You'll see this window pop up asking where you want the paddle to check for. That means we're going to check for the top and the bottom. We're going to press OK. So now we see the paddle leaves the play area on the bottom or the top. So what's going to happen? We're going to right click underneath the paddle right here, highlight movement, stop. So now when this reads out to, if the paddle touches the top or bottom of the screen, it will stop there. Let's go ahead and test that out. Let's press Run and Frame. So now when we move our paddle, it doesn't leave when it, the edge of the screen. Let's go ahead and close that out. All right, so we can move our paddle now. Now we need a ball to hit around. Let's go back to the Frame Editor, which was right here. We are going to need another active object. So let's go ahead and right click anywhere in this area and press insert object. Now let's get our active object. And you can press OK or you can double click on it. And we're going to, let's just place this in the middle. And then don't forget to rename it. So we're going to right click, press rename. Let's call it ball. So now that we have our ball, let's go ahead and make it look like a ball. Let's double click on it and erase everything we have right here. And now let's draw a ball. So we can use a ellipse tool. Actually, let's make it a little different color. We can press undo. Let's give it, let's give it a black outline. And let's make it some yellow. And of course, you don't have to do all these fancy shading stuff. It, it, it can look like however you want. It's up to you. It doesn't even have to be a ball. It could be, I don't know, like a hockey puck or something completely random. It's up to your imagination. Let's press OK. Now let's make our ball move. We're going to go over to the Properties window and click on Movement. This time, we are going to use the Bouncing Ball movement. So let's click on Static and press Bouncing Ball. What the Bouncing Ball does is that it moves around, in fact, actually very much like a hockey puck. It it's supposed to bounce when it hits an object, but you'll have to tell to. We're going to get to that in a little bit. So you don't have to change much right here. You can change the speed if you want to make, if you want to make the ball go faster or slower. But first, let's make it so that it actually bounces off the edges of the screen. We're going to press Events. Behaviors, New. Now we're going to click on the space, press Edit. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make it so that when the ball leaves through the top or the bottom, it will bounce. So we're going to do what we did last time with the paddle. New condition, right click on the ball, position, test position of the ball. We're going to press the up and the down. Now, if you're wondering why not, why we're not doing left to right, we're actually going to be doing something a little bit different when it leaves through the 
left and right. We're, we're going to get to that. So let's press OK. Right click on the ball, say movement. This time we say bounce, because if we were to say stop, it will actually just stop at the edge of the screen and not move. We're going to say bounce. So the ball is going to bounce now, but let's add another set of conditions. Let's go ahead and say new condition. We're going to check to see what happens when it leaves to the left or the right. That is, say the ball goes through the goal. So right click, position test position of the ball. We're going to say the ball leaves through the left and the right and press OK. Now let's right click under the ball and say position, select position. Now it's going to ask you where you want this ball to return to. So right there's a good spot, right in the middle of the play field. We can just press OK. Now, what this little set position thing does, it causes the ball to teleport when it leaves through the left or the right. In fact, we can actually test it right now. And actually, a little shortcut, you can either press F7 or press this button right here to run the game. So we're just going to press F7. We see the ball is bouncing around. And when it hits the edge, it moves the middle. Now, if you notice one thing, the ball does nothing if it hits the paddle. Well, we are going to fix that. Let's go ahead and close this out. Now, there's a lot of ways you can do it, but the way that I'm going to do it, I'm actually going to hop over to the paddle. Let's go ahead and press Frame Editor. Go back to the paddle. Now we're going to go under where the behaviors were and press Edit. Now we see where our last condition was. The If the paddle leaves the play area to the bottom of the top, it's going to stop. We're going to add a new one that says what will happen if the paddle touches the ball. Let's go ahead and press new condition. You have to right click on the paddle, collisions, another object. Now the ball's not here. We are going to have to import it. So let's click on the import tab and click on the ball and press OK. So now we see the condition collisions between the paddle and the ball. We're going to right click underneath the ball and say movement, bounce. Now we can run our game. And now the paddle, it bounces, or the, the ball bounces off the paddle now. Well, not quite to the, it's a little imperfect, but it'll do for now. But we still have to add the other player. And we'll be getting to that in the next video. But for now, don't forget to save your game. So let's go ahead and press save. You can also click right here. And I will see you next time.